Welcome everybody. This is another training webinar from Equipment Zone. My name is Jay Bussell and I'm, I guess, the marketing guy. That's, that's probably my, uh, my official, unofficial title. But it's really not about me. It's about the two gentlemen that have joined me today because they have a lot of experience. And I want to welcome also uh, Terry Combs, who everybody is very familiar with. He is our seasoned veteran, our DTG guru, the inventor of Oh, I went too far, didn't I? You did. You did indeed, my friend. <laughs> and <laughs> that's still on the down low, my invention. Oh, okay. Okay. He hasn't. Yeah. The, sorry. I mean, the creator of wonderful tacos. And uh, sitting <laughs> sitting with us is Tim Allen. Tim, this is your first official webinar. You've been helping us for weeks and weeks in the chat, but we figured we need you in the front lines. We need you. We need that bright beard and bright face to join us. So, welcome, Tim. We're glad you're here. Glad to be here. Excited for this topic, guys. We have five reasons why, five reasons why, what, the DTF world is blowing up? Is that <laughs> we cannot seem to satisfy the need, but why DTF transfers are perfect, perfect for your F2000, your F2100, and your F3070. In other words, your Epson DTG printers. Would that be a fair assessment? Do you think we've got the right title here, guys? I, I think it says everything that we're going to talk about, Jay. So I, I yeah. do too. It is perfect. And we have been, uh, you know, we've been working hard on this. I got to give our team some credit, especially the tech department and all the testing that goes on uh, both in, in Arizona and New Jersey. And yes, for whoever said, is it hot yet in Arizona? Yeah, it's hot. Yep. We've already, uh, have, have we Saturday will be 107 degrees. <laughs> Beautiful. Welcome to the summer. Welcome to Arizona. The three of us are in Tempe, Arizona in our office. Well, Terry's in his home office in Arizona, but we're glad that uh, we could be joining everybody from wherever you are from. Um, we've got folks that apparently have met uh, Terry, the great one at the ISS Atlantic show. Um, but yes, just to be clear, this is not just about the Epson DTG, but it is because that is the line that we represent. So um, we are not experts with other printers, uh, specifically Brother and so on and so forth. Um, but it is my understanding, right, Terry, that truth be told, DTF processes work on their systems too. Yeah, Jay. I, and and I, I've been asking around and I, I don't know of any direct-to-garment printer that is not capable of doing DTF. I haven't had a, a single one uh, say that uh, they've uh, not been able to do it. So it's, uh, it's the, the water-based uh, inks for DTG printing, while not the same, are all similar chemistry. So they work uh, similarly well uh, doing DTG or DTF. Right. Right, right, right. It's funny. We got to keep that direct to film, direct to transfer, the transfer concept rather than printing on the substrate of, of the finished garment, a t-shirt, a hoodie, etc. We're printing on a piece of film preparation that's already taken place. That film then is transferred the image onto the substrate. So it is a transfer process. Um, but to be clear, thank you. We are talking about the Epson products because that's what we know best. That's the uh, the line that we represent. We are still, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, you, you're usually up on this, but the uh, number one reseller for Epson for the F2100, really the DTG lineup, would that be fair to say or am I stretching? Exactly right. We, we are Epson's number one reseller and Epson is the number one DTG product in the world. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, I, I, I'm proud deal. about that. Yeah. So I know Tim was was excited to hear that when he got started. Um, but Terry, I want to ask you a little bit about the backstory of why we got here. Just if, if you don't mind, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. But um, we started hearing this maybe like a year and a couple of months ago. I know it was about last, it was, it was, it was about a, I want to say it was just after that ISS Long Beach show. Maybe, maybe right. I'm getting my timeline wrong, but you probably heard about it before I did because I think, you know, maybe Aaron or, or Todd or somebody was talking about it, but it's been on the I, horizon now for like, what, yeah. two years, really? Yeah, getting close to that. I, you know, I have to confess too, um, I do a podcast called Two Regular Guys uh, with Aaron Montgomery and Aaron messaged me and said, hey, maybe we should do a show about DTF, you know, and have you been hearing about it? And I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. I've never, <laughs> so this was a couple of years ago. And so started doing a little bit of research and 
And of course, you know, there weren't very many trade shows at the time, so you couldn't get your hands on it. All you could do is right. hear about it. And, uh, and so it, it was, it took a little while to, to kind of get our fingers around it. But then uh, when the experimentation started to do this on a direct garment machine, uh, my, my expectations were not high, um, mm-hmm. but I was blown away by the, the print quality, the washability. Uh, it, it's been a pretty amazing uh, uh, short trip for us. And, and Jay, as you mentioned, our techs have spent months and months and months experimenting with, uh, with adhesives and, and paper and, and settings, the amount of ink we lay down and the, and, and the proper way to get a cure and the, and, and the best way to get that, that uh, uh, transfer to adhere permanently to that garment. So, yeah. you know, kudos to, to the Equipment Zone uh, uh, technical staff because they have, they have uh, put many, 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 many hours into the process to make sure that, that we got it right before we ever even brought it up to any of our customers. Yeah, I love that. And it was almost like we were trying to catch up, really, because we had heard that other major manufacturers were coming. We had seen that the start of this, it appeared to be almost that DIY conversion. And I know, right. Terry, you were familiar with that in the early days of DTG, where everything was just kind of a land grab. It was just like chaos <laughs> and everybody trying something and did it work for you. And, and but, you know, we're past that stage. And when we started, we, we really dove in, did the technicals, as you said, but now we want to kind of take a step back. And the purpose of this webinar training is to remind all of our audience, whether you are a customer or just a, a great listener, that this is possible. This is real. This is not going away. And it's amazing with the Epson products. That's really what this is. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a commercial and a little bit of training. And we're not trying to sell you something. We just want you to know it's real. It's it's legit. And that's what we're going to try to do is provide these five reasons why we know it is, but to help uh, instill. Because Terry, wasn't it just yesterday we had a, uh, a guest stop by? We were doing a demo here in the uh, Tempe office. And, and this was a very successful business owner, right? Oh, and- absolutely. Uh, doing uh, uh, embroidery, screen printing, offset printing, all, all types of printing. And and, uh, and, and what does he say when he walked through the door uh, there in our Tempe office? I'm trying to decide between direct to garment and direct to film. Uh, you know, how do they compare? And of course, I said, well, you know, you can do both on a direct to garment printer. And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, and uh, then he said, oh, you mean you you can either set it up as a DTG printer or a direct to film printer? No, no, it's it's and that being our reason number one, because you can you can do it with the machine that you have. So if you're out there and you have really any direct to garment printer, you are capable right now today of doing uh, direct to film uh, transfers. And because and it's all the same ink, there's no retrofitting, there's no modifications to the machine. We could in fact, we did yesterday with uh, with the customer who came in for the demonstration. We did uh, we did a print for him and, you know, went through the whole explanation. He goes, can we do the same thing as DTF? Sure. Absolutely. And went over and grabbed the direct to film uh, film, put it on the printer, went back, did uh, uh, went to uh, garment creator, flipped the image uh, and, and it's all saved there in the computer, being able to flip that image around and, uh, and printed the exact same image as a DTF transfer, then he'd applied it onto the garment for the customer and they had it side by side. Here, here's DTG, here's DTF uh, on the exact same machine. And you could do that all day long. You could you could print five shirts, do three transfers, print a, a hoodie, come back and do two transfers. And, um, and, and Jay, this has really, really taken off for our customers who've embraced DTF. Uh, we, I was talking to a customer just about two weeks ago who was buying their second uh, F2100 and second because the first one they bought in September. And, uh, and she said the reason that she needed another, another printer was she had no idea. She had an idea about DTG. Mm-hmm. She had no idea how mm-hmm. much DTF was going to take off for her. And she had to buy a second printer just to keep up with her demand. Oh, that sounds like a terrible problem. You poor thing, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea my business was going to grow so fast. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, we are going to talk about, somebody's talking about, you know, substrates. We are going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but uh, so, so just to summarize, Terry, you really hit the, 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 the first base hit here today, which was number one is 
because you can, because it's possible, because you're not changing your printer. You're using the same printer and you're not changing the inks. That's what everybody's still right. stuck on. You're using the same Epson ink. And it's a water-based ink. It's formulated for this. And we've tested it on our paper with this adhesive. So it is truly a system that works really, really well. I'm super proud of it. I was like you, truth, truth be told, skeptical. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Transfers, this is going to be like a science project. Sometimes it's going to work and it's not going to wash. It's not going to last. I don't, I didn't right. even want to start this process, but the more I started doing it, man, the more I was sold. I was like, in so many applications, if we're going to talk about it, just it's it's a winner. It's a winner. So, yes, exactly. Terry, thank you. Number one reason because you can, and I hope everybody hears us loudly. That uh, you know, you're you're two. What are, what are, what do they need really? They need they need transfer paper. They need the adhesive powder, and they need some instructions on how to do it. And we've got exactly. all three of those. So, yeah. When was the last time you could add a new production process for under a couple hundred bucks? Exactly. Uh, I mean, to, to get started, yeah. um, buy a few consumables, try it out. And how many, I'm, I mean, how many have done that? How many of our customers have done that and just fallen in love with it and was very skeptical like we were, um, you know, they just, they didn't know it would work. And when you, when you can buy the starter kit or the sample pack for a hundred bucks um, and get started, even with a guide instructions on how to do it, um, that's pretty incredible. And, and the response has been, uh, very positive. Yeah. I love what you said, Tim, about how, how, could, how, for so, for so little risk and so little money, you're, you're in, you're almost like you reinvented your printer. It's like you have, you cloned it. Now you have two and don't forget, you know, if there was a quote downfall or a limitation, um, or, or some negative press on, on all DTG printers, it was the lack of, it, you know, you couldn't really print on, on poly substrates or, or high poly content, and that, you know, so it was limiting. It was, it was designed for cotton. It was designed for a high cotton blend. And, uh, and that's where those inks were. But now with this transfer process and that adhesive, guess what? Like you said, Tim, for under 200 bucks, you just opened up how many new doors, how many new possibilities. And that's why I get excited. Forgive me. My tone goes up. I get fired up because it's just like, man, I want to buy a printer, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, and, and uh, just like Tim was saying, it's so inexpensive to get into it. Um, because there's nothing to buy except for the supplies and, and, and both of you can attest to this. Uh, you know, we've done, uh, we've done the Long Beach show. We've done the Atlantic city show. Uh, I I've, I've spoken at a couple of other events. And when you say to someone that I did this, this DTF transfer on this DTG printer, they're all like, wait, what? And it, it's like 90% of the people go, hold on a second. I, I thought you had to have a DTF machine to do this and, right. and uh, very surprised. And, 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 and let's be honest that, that when people look at or feel the shirt side by side, they'll say, gosh, the one off the DTG printer has a much nicer feel to it. It feels more like a, a DTG print as opposed to uh, some of the other DTF uh, exclusive machines. Yeah, love that. We've got some great questions in the chat. I want to take three of them right now before we go on to our other reasons. Uh, but before we do, Tim actually was, thank you, Tim. You, you gave us the second reason, which was it's affordable to start and it's affordable to test. So for those of you who think, you know, five real reasons, why should we try this? We'll try it because for under $100, we're happy to send you a sample kit with the instructions. We've got an hour long video if you want to watch it or a multiple, I don't know, 18, 20 page PDF a uh, uh, downloadable instruction guide. So for, for literally less than $200, you are now a DTF uh, printer. But let's go back to the chat because a couple of quick questions. First one to uh, you, Tim, we've got two people, three people now that have asked, just to be sure, uh, do, do, you, do you have to pre-treat the garments to do DTF? Uh, no, you do not. Um, and that, that's uh, what we're hearing about. If, if people are struggling with the pre-treatment process, um, they're not quite dialed in on that process, although they still should uh, learn that process and be doing DTG. Um, this kind of bridges the gap. Uh, if you can eliminate that variable and, and be producing the shirts that you purchased your equipment for, um, you know, you, you have a, a, an alternative to pre-treating your shirts. Um, 
Uh, yeah, uh, no pretreatment in, involved in the DTF process. None, none necessary. Perfect. Terry, then the next one to you, because this comes up. So I, I'm really glad someone asked this question in the chat. Is DTF faster and better than DTG? That's an awesome question. And I hear it pretty often. It, it, it's, it's not faster. It's the same amount of time. Um, it, it, is it better? It's another way to decorate a garment. Uh, just like you were saying, Jay, when uh, when people would talk about polyester before DTF, uh, some uh, DTG folks would say, well, you can do polyester with our machine. And others say, well, you, you can't do it with our machine. Uh, you could do it on any directed garment machine. Should you? Probably not. Because a, a direct DTG print on a 100% polyester shirt uh, didn't wash very well, uh, was a little dull, and, and it had drawbacks. But but DTF gives you that opportunity to do additional things. So uh, is it better? It's not better. It's different. It gives you more opportunity with the machine you already have. Yeah, I think it's more flexible. Maybe is kind of one of the ways I'm you know, helping people understand because of the variety of additional product that you have, both in substrate and in location, because, you know, you, you've got some flexibility. Also, you can create the transfer and set it aside. So we've done this. We, we've specifically optimized our sheets to the maximum or most common, the most common are 14 by uh, 16 and 16 by 20, because those are the two largest platen. And, and so if I can print up, uh, you know, several dozen of these transfers and have sleeve prints or flags or um, charities that I support, uh, ribbons, um, veterans causes, things that I'm going to add to a sleeve or a secondary location that I can just have a drawer sitting there. That's an advantage. That's, that's an advantage in terms of flexibility. So again, to your point, Terry, it's not faster necessarily. It isn't, it isn't really a faster th through the printer still printing at the same speed but it's giving you these additional opportunities and additional flexibility. So exactly. Love that. Love that. Love that. Well, it kind of leads us into this next point, Terry, which is to you, the third reason kind of that flexibility allows us to do other things, maybe in other locations. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and so point number three is the ability to promote events, your business brands, uh, your company with a full color neck label. And so you, you pull out the tag and you, and you put in this transfer and, and it's, um, you know, with CMYK, which all direct to garment printers are, you can make 16 million colors. Uh, you, you can do a full color label inside of that collar or outside of that collar. And, and of course, you know, uh, Geonight, uh, our, our vendor for heat presses, they have a specific heat press just for that purpose that comes with three different platen sizes. And, uh, you know, we were doing that uh, at, at, the, um, at the Impressions Expo in Atlantic City, and we, we did them right up to the point where somebody came by and saw our big stack of sheets that had, you know, 20 neck labels on them and just took them and rolled them up and walked away. <laughs> so somewhere, somebody has a whole bunch of Equipment Zone logos with a full color background, <laughs> size extra large. And, and, and in there, obviously, you can do a variety of sizes. You can offer this to your customer as a promotion as well, putting their information, excuse me, their information inside of that collar. So it's, uh, it, it's really a, a, a cool option where you can really promote your business. And, and, you know, as I said, on the inside or the outside there, that's, that's still a viable decoration to promote, to brand your business on, on the backside of that shirt with yeah, this. And, and, and I and could easily see, I could easily see people doing a hang tag, doing a transfer and heat applying it to a piece of chipboard or cardboard because it would adhere, especially for the purposes of just a hang tag. It's not like right. you need to worry. Um, so that you have that additional decoration, full color. Love that Terry, come on. I mean, that's that we know how often would we have done that screen printing would you set would you go through the process oh. of doing <laughs> you, both were, you, you both were like already shaking your heads <laughs> screen printers hey, are like you mean i can i can print something other than cool gray four <laughs> <laughs> we uh yeah it's it, it's a different world but you know a, a screen printer although could be doing this method for the labels in the shirts that they screen, they're screen printing the image, but they're using DTF for the, uh, 
for the uh, size and, and branding of that shirt. There, yeah. By the way, there are specifications on what needs to be on a label if you've cut out the label. So uh, make sure you check that out before you start firing these out into the uh, ethos. Yeah, <laughs> great point. Love Good that. Good tip. We, we've all been there. But I just think that additional branding is often missed. And when it is done, it's usually done in one color land. And that's kind of boring. So now we get to splash the color. We get to take something like this in full color in all its glory you know, and put that in the back or the front or left chest or sleeve. Um, yeah, let's get, look at Tim. <laughs> look at Tim over there taking a sip of his, his beverage. Liquid death in the easy for me. Okay, so quick question, Terry. So DTF on a DTG printer can be used for any kind of garment? Um, basically, yes. Any, any fabric. Um, you have an opportunity to heat set it at, at, a, at a, anywhere from about 225 degrees up to 340 degrees. So yes, uh, you, you can decorate. And, and, and the, the, what happens here is there's a barrier. The adhesive uh, on the back of the transfer is a barrier between the garment and the image, which means that, that you don't have dye migration. And that, that is the, the true issue you have when you print um, 100% polys or, or man-made fabrics. So that barrier allows you to have a bright white image on that red 100% polyester garment. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks for that clarity. We've got a lot of action right now in the chat. Washability on poly low cottons, Tim, are there any washability issues we need to know about? Um, not that we've noticed thus far. Um, and, and like Jay was saying, we do extensive, um, um, our tech department does extensive testing and washing and, you know, making sure things are holding up. Um, as far as over like years and years, unfortunately, this is a, such a new technology um, that we don't have the the data that's going to say, hey, this is going to last, you know, a hundred washes. We don't have that kind of, um, you know, longevity in the process. Right. But um, yeah, I, I, everything's looking good so far. Ooh, close up on Jay. I like that I, extreme close up. Sorry. <laughs> you you know, in, in garment decorating, the standard in our industry is 50 washings before any degradation of the image. And you're certainly going to get that with uh, the, a DTF transfer. I'm, I know this isn't, you know, normally what we do, but I'm holding this up because it's just a tri-blend that we did about six months ago. I've washed this easily 20 times and there, it literally looks like it just got pressed today. And so, yes, you can use white ink on poly cottons, tri-blends, 100% um, poly. We've done a lot of testing. We've done a lot of washing. And so I would say in terms of content and in terms of can you do this on anything, I would say there's probably going to be some substrates we haven't yet tested, or there might be some uh, protective coatings that are sprayed on, you know, different stain releases or different things like that. We, we haven't tested everything, but we are finding it amazingly resilient. And yes, we have tried umbrellas, which is nylon, and it worked really well. So even- And obviously water repellent nylon. <laughs> correct. So, so I, we want to be careful. We're not saying it's the end all be all. It's perfect for every application. We haven't tested everything yet, but on and the common products that an apparel decorator would be using, um, it's it's getting really high marks and significantly stand standing up the test of time to washing and drying. Because by the way, I'm not doing anything special with that t-shirt other than washing it and it's going in the dryer. So it's not like I'm your guy washing it. it, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally guy washing. So, so somebody is asking, does the type of poly matter? Yeah, there could be some issues there. We're, we're again, we're not testing every single polyester. That's why you should get a sample pack and test it and do some testing. How many times in our training webinars, guys, have we talked about test, practice, test, practice, test, practice, right? That's, that's, that's a big part of how you're going to be comfortable with your equipment and how your promise to your customer, you're going to feel confident. You're going to have that confidence that you, that, you know, you're not just taking our word for it. So we're, and we're that's, not, and, and, and Jay, that's with any type of decoration, whether I'm a screen printer, I'm doing HT, you know, heat transfer vinyl, no matter what I'm doing, you have to do testing. You have to, you have to uh, decorate those products and you have, have to put them in your own washer and, 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 and find that sweet spot for your heat press or your conveyor oven or whatever you're using uh, to, you know, testing is testing is part of the industry. You, you, mm -hmm. you, the more you do it, the better. Yeah, great. This is a lively chat. Before we get to the next point, Tim, which would be yours, 
I, I want to share a couple of, of, of examples. Just again, if, if you guys will, you know, you know, won't tease me for this. I've got them on the screen. And the reason that I did this is, you know, location. This was the first thing I wanted to show you is the one in the upper left is a white hoodie that has three seams on it. I have no idea why it was constructed this way. Maybe it's cool. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in on that kind of trending. But the reality is, is it worked really well. I have it here. And, and it had three seams on it. So we were able to print that right up there on the back of the hoodie so that it would have a cool, you know, when the hood's down, you can still read it. Is it upside down if I wear the hoodie? Yes, it is. We know that. How often do you really wear your hood up, Tim? I don't, but, but in high school, my kids wear them all like tightened up and so, so but maybe, I, maybe you want to for, flip that around. Yeah, I'm not for me, sure. It but... would be perfect. I don't <laughs> want to ever mess with my hair. Oh, right, right, right. Nor do I. So the other one is on the pocket, purposely on the pocket of the hoodie. So, I mean, whether it's on the hood or whether it's on the pocket, um, location is, is one of the reasons that this, this DTF technology is so cool. It's, uh, it's easy. Um, and by the way, um, how did I, how did I print that on the hoodie before anybody asks that question? I used a hat press. Um, I could have used the label press, but I used the hat press because it was what's closest to me and it was what I could just turn on and quickly do. So be inventive, be creative, uh, use the tools that you have. Um, this one right here was fun because this was from our trade show experience in, uh, start, start of the year at the Impressions Expo in, in Long Beach. And this matched our backdrop. And so again, this was a blended hoodie. And so a lot of hoodies are blends. They're 60, 40, 70, 30, 50, 50, et cetera. So could we have done this on a DTG printer? Probably. Would we have gotten the vibrancy of color? I'm not sure. Did I have to pre-treat this? No. Um, you know, and it's a blend. So, I mean, it, it just works. Terry, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, you know, when uh, somebody like Sanmar or SNS or any of those uh, Alpha Broad or when they have a sale on hoodies, what is it? It's 50 50. So they have a sale. And so that's when we start getting the phone calls saying, Hey, I'm printing this red hoodie and, yeah. and I'm don't, not getting a very bright image. Well, what's the fabric? Oh, well, uh, Sandmar was having a sale that translates <laughs> to it's 50 50. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, and I'm telling you, and look, so that you don't think I'm like doctoring up those photos. I mean, does that look bright to you guys or, or, or is it just, you know, it's not smoke and mirrors here. It's the real deal. So again, no dye migration with this process. Yep, exactly. And hundred percent polyester, hundred percent poly, you know, so we've got, we've got some pretty good samples here. I just wanted to be able to kind of throw those in the mix. So people understood that that was again, why we have seen the increase um, in attraction um, and the possibilities in these several doors opening that are that are so important for so many people. So um, we've got a yeah, couple I of- had a, I had somebody ask me the other day, hey, why can't I just do that with my wide format printer and, uh, you know, print on some heat transfer vinyl? And I, I told him, hey, um, how long does it take for your, your people to weed out all the uh, excess? And he's like, what do you, no weeding? Um, and <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, for those of a, you who have, have the wide format option. Listen, it is a big deal. And, and, you know, we threw, we threw out the umbrella reference earlier because we, I have a friend in New Jersey, a large manufacturer, so often called a supplier in the promotional products world, um, who, who is the wholesale decorator and importer of, of millions of umbrellas. And they have literally an army. They have a full team, like 30 people. Okay, and all they're doing is applying, they're weeding, they're weeding out, then applying. And, and you know, they're, they're just like locked in. That's the bottleneck of their entire operation is weeding. And I'm like, have you heard of DTF? And they're like, huh, what? So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a disruptor. This is, this is a great place and a great time to own an Epson printer. Of course, yes, we're not experts on all the other printers. We believe that it works, but we're gonna to stick to our guns and just say, we've tested this on the Epsons and, and it's the Epson ink is, is resilient. And the process is durable and, and these opportunities are many. So Tim, speaking of that, we'll, we'll get to more of these questions. We've got great questions in the chat, but Tim, I want you to see if you could share with us number four, the fourth reason why we believe that this is a, a and I'm gonna use this term for a specific reason, a game changer. 
a game changer. Well, hey, uh, something I'm really proud about, Jay, I showed you yesterday. Uh, I'm a huge Suns fan, and hopefully they, they can pull one out tonight, um, you know, make the series not tied up. No uh, Suns. But I, I was excited about this one. Um, so that's a, that's a that's a DTF transfer, right? Um, got some uh, dimension oh, there. I won't nice. give away the secret sauce there. I I, I think there's got to be some uh, innovation in in your in your business and testing, as Terry said. But I'm pretty proud of this hat. Um, that's done. DTF and a and a cap press. Um, other this red structured hat. So. This is not a dad hat, which were typically uh, is a limitation for DTG printing. Um, so, you know, being able to print a DTF transfer, take it over to your cap press and transfer it onto a structured type hat opens up your capabilities within, uh, you know, printing on other products. Uh, it's huge. Um, the limitations that we have with direct to garment printing is, you know, we have to lay it flat on the platen. Uh, everybody knows that if we can get it flat under the platen, we can print it. Um, but, but what about these other products? What about the other opportunities that are available in the marketplace? Um, so wide variety of different things that you can do. Heat pressing on, on your uh, mouse pads, heat pressing, you know, it kind of gets you into the promo industry as well. You know, heat pressing onto some other uh, other products, other substrates. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, you know, trying to find the products that aren't, uh, that are popular products that typically don't mesh well with DTG. We, I'm finding that the uh, DTF transfer is working out quite well. Love it. I love it. I knew you were a headwear guy. So am I, we love our hats. Um, I'm pretty proud of this. That is a bright white print that's going to last a really long time. This one was a different one, and I did the hashtag easy for me. And I've had this now for six months. I made it. It's a structured hat, which is why we love it. Because, yeah, dad hats, you can smush them flat, and then you can jam them under the DTG printer. And, and we've done that. We've all done that. And we've got some great prints out of it. But that's it. You're not doing that with any other hat. So you've got like 2% of the hats out there, and 98% of the others you can't print on. So, again, flexibility, opportunity. Um, and if I were you and I'm not, but if I were you, since I'm the marketing guy, you better believe there would be a koozie and a hat or two or three or a dozen that I would be doing with my customer's logo going in every outbound order because I've already got the artwork. Why not do a, a sheet of transfers? Surprise and delight, right, Terry? How often have we talked about building our business that way? Oh, exactly right. And, and you know, adding hats to your uh, offering is is a huge addition. And just like you said, Jay, and, and by using a DTG printer, yeah, I can take that image. I just printed uh, two dozen hoodies for you. I can shrink that down, yep. repeat it, put it on a hat. And what are they going to do? First of all, they're going to be thrilled that, that you gave them this hat. Second of all, they're going to say, I didn't realize you could do this. Hey, you know what? Could we get a couple of dozen hats also? And, you know, as a screen printer, and it was, it's much harder to screen print on hats, but uh, back when I was an active screen printer, I, I was always promoting hats with garments and, and doubling up my orders. And this is a, this is just such an easy way to make that happen. And, yeah. and, and can I add one more thing? Um, oh, please, they, these, please. these, um, uh, recycled uh, water bottle grocery bags. Yes. I mean, those are perfect for this process. And, and you know, for people to, to uh, if somebody you're selling to a retailer that they could have as a giveaway with their logo on the bag. And so there's just so many, it opens up so many more doors for you beyond DTG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great chat here. I'm going to address a couple here and then I've got the testimonials I want to show. Uh, I'm going to throw this to you, Terry. If printing full color on dark garments, does the print of the white actually last? Is that white going to last? Is then, it, are they, are they saying it, will it last or do you do it last? Is, I think, I think both is what I would like okay. to ask you, but yes. So y yes, the, yes. The order it, it will. And then will it last? Yeah, after the fact, you're not going to have any dye migration into that white ink, so it will remain bright white. And in fact, you do print the colors and then print white on the back. Any any screen printer out there who's ever printed uh, plastisol transfer, same concept. You just print in reverse order, and if it's going on a dark garment, you print that white 
under base last. And we obviously have instructions, full instructions on exactly how to do this process. Yeah, I would strongly recommend you reach out to Terry and to Tim and to Amy, who's who's watching. And thank you, Amy, because weeding is for gardens. You were right, 100% correct. <laughs> you know, when any, anybody says the word reading to a garment, or weeding to a garment decorator, a shudder goes across the industry. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it. We've all oh, been there. Weeding. <laughs> uh, but you can reach out to Amy or Tim or Terry, and they can they can tell you how to get a hold of the, the instructions on how to do this, where to go on our. We have it on our e-commerce site. You can go to our website and you can actually um, get a sample test pack and, and get it started and get, get, get going. You know, you got to practice. You, you can listen to us and we can show you sample after sample after sample and be excited. But truth be told, it won't transfer to you until you do it. And once you do it and you test wash, um, you're going to be pretty impressed. So, um, and, and by the way, our, our, uh, our support team, all of them are fully versed in how to do DTF transfers. So if you do have questions, you know, the images aren't bright enough or whatever, uh, you can talk to them because they have, they have all produced hundreds and hundreds of these transfers. Perfect. So a, a couple of more came in, but I'm, I'm going to get to them. So don't, don't leave, don't, don't leave us yet, Brian. I see yours and some of the others that came in, Richard, thank you. But um, I want to share my screen again, because this was the essence of why we got started. And I know Richard uh, uh, and a couple of other folks s s submitted some, but Greg is, I think on this, this webinar. So Greg, you can, you can at least uh, correct me if you think I'm, if, if, if this seems like an exaggeration, it is not. So um, I love what, I love what Greg next level said about, you know, it seemed risky to get into the DTF biz. So the more he read about about it, the more he realized you could do DTF on the F2100. And once we at Equipment Zone started carrying the film and the powder and we shared our instructions, it gave him the confidence to try it. He was literally using the same printer, the same software, Garment Creator, and the same inks. So he knew his risk was really low. He, he took a shot, bought both sizes of film, and guess what? It literally transformed their business. Love that. Love that. It's not that we're no longer fans of DTG printing. We still are and always will be. It's just, it's changing the game and it's opening more doors and it literally transformed their business. And the other one from Summer Christine, DTF is a game changer. I love what she says about no more pre-treat, doesn't have to worry about the, the blends of the poly or, or the substrates, using less white ink, no more outsourcing transfers to other people, making your own, um, not worrying about minimums, and then just tons of happy customers. So these are people that are doing this. These are people in our network that have tried our system and it's a game changer. It literally has transformed their business. So that's why I wanted to share that folks. Uh, make sure that you know that this is a real deal. You can get the sample pack on our website. You can go up to the uh, company store, the e-commerce store, click on DTF and you will see the sample pack. Um, in fact, I've got a slide of, of them coming up just so you can kind of see what to look for. Um, so you can see you're going you're gonna to be able to get some with just, you know, just the, the powder, the sheets and the instructions. We have found that a lot of people do not yet have the full size platen, the 16 by 20 platen. So you can basically buy the platen. This isn't a commercial, but I just want to explain it. You buy the platen, you get all the supplies for free. So it's almost like a, why wouldn't you do that at that point? So check them out, get those packages. If you have any questions, Tim, Terry, Amy. Um, but let's get back to the show and let's answer some more questions because the chat came in. Um, Tim, I'm going to throw this uh, to you if you're ready. Born ready. Just Ooh, kidding. I love it. Okay. I, I hope know. I don't flood. This is from that. No, you won't. You won't. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw you a question. You didn't know the answer. To. Brian asked, so I already have an F3070. That's the larger, higher production uh, printer. I already have the F3070. What is the learning curve on that machine for GTS? Well, the nice learning curve should be very minimum. It's really just probably getting over the, this is going to print white last and thinking that you're, when it's printing, that you're not making a mistake because it's printing the CMYK on the film first. Um, it, learning curve is not, not huge. It's not a new, I want to reiterate this. It's really not a new process. It's a new order of the same things you're already doing. Well said. Well said. Terry, can you speak to the differences uh, between the black and the, and the white adhesives? When would I use one over the other? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> there are um, some folks who, uh, depending on what machine they're using, 
uh, ha- will occasionally have a little, um, if you use the white adhesive and you're printing a black shirt, might have a little little halo around the image. So they ask us for black adhesive. That said, uh, there's some little nuances that our text can give you on how to uh, apply the adhesive, the uh, the steps in doing that. Uh, f- for instance, allowing that uh, transfer to sit for a minute before you actually a- apply the adhesive. And for the most part, that eliminates that halo. So I will tell you that the vast majority of people doing DTF just use the white adhesive. The, the black adhesive, to be, to be honest, is a little bit of a Band-Aid for maybe uh, not getting everything in your process uh, correct. So uh, get, get your process down, talk to our technicians about those little tweaks they do to make it, to make it uh, both uh, the adhesive applied and applying to the garment and, uh, and you can just use the white adhesive for whatever you're doing. Perfect. Yeah. So yes, you are still using garment creator. Um, for those of you that may have a rip software, we could only speak to the easy rip pro. Um, and we are obviously not just biased, although we are, we are big fans for a reason. And I'm going to tease you with something that I purposely did not put in the slides. I have a side by side by side comparison that I'm gonna post on our Facebook page today. So yes, I'm driving traffic to our Facebook page. That's what marketers do. So don't be mad, don't hate the player. Um, (laughs) And I'm gonna share that photo so that you can see a side by side by side of the exact same graphic. We, We sent one to an outsourcing company to do a DTF. We did one on Garment Creator and we did the other on Easy Rip Pro. And, I, and I'm showing the white side up on purpose and you will see a dramatic difference between all three. And so if you thought you were using less ink through Garment Creator, you are, but you are gonna use even significantly less white ink if you have the Easy Rip Pro software. So look for that in about an hour on our Facebook page, go to Equipment Zone on Facebook. If you're not following us, what? Come on. So check that out and uh, you'll, you'll be happy you did. So I hope, I hope that I teased you enough with that, but you're not upset with me. Um, okay, so let's go. We have one more, uh, Tim, or, or where are we? We're back to Terry. Terry, yep. you're number five. Gonna, you're going to, we're rounding third or heading for home. I know there's not five bases on a, on a, <laughs> on a baseball field, but <laughs> let's pretend there are. Point number we should five. have started on deck. Yeah, we're on deck. <laughs> then we got to the batting. Then we got to the batting. Then we then we hit the first. Okay, Terry. But seriously, number five, five reasons. We've covered lots of reasons. We knew we would. We've wandered around. We hope everybody um, can handle that. It's typically our style. Um, but number five, what, what's another reason that you that you and that we have seen makes so much sense for this process? Well, you know, uh, Jay and Tim, with uh, with COVID in in our rearview mirror for most of us. Uh, especially here in you know the free state of Arizona, <laughs> the uh, more and more on-site decorating opportunities, uh, decorating at, at a bar with a live band, and 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 you're printing, um, you're printing the band lyrics, and somebody buys a shirt, and then they go up and the band signs it. Um, all types of on-site events, and, and you can take your Epson F twenty one hundred or F two thousand, not a 3070, but you could take uh, a 2100 to an event and you can't do that with all directed garment printers, but wouldn't it be way easier to do a, a bunch of DDF transfers ahead of time and just show up there with your heat press and your hat press and do all that decorating right there. And Hey, guess what? Uh, the, if there was a, if there was a, a thunderstorm before the event and only half the people showed up, what have I got committed here? I've got I've got a lot of transfers instead of finished product as well. So on-site printing by just showing up with your DTF transfers and your heat press and you're good to go. And and before COVID and Jay, you know, your your marketing, yeah, you know this, it was becoming huge prior to COVID where people were doing on-site decoration at events. It, it's coming back. We, you know, before COVID, we had I know of three customers of my own that were doing corporate events, uh, Christmas party, holiday events, where, you know, you walked in the door and you're, you're uh, uh, getting the, the, a t-shirt custom decorated right there at the event. Uh, That's all going to come back again. And it's coming back quickly now. Definitely. It is. Uh, Terry is right. He's not miss, 
He's not sharing misinformation. He is sharing the truth. Uh, he has a customer that does auto shows and we, we got to see some video and some pictures of one of the last auto shows before the COVID hit. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they had multiple printers, four or five, if I'm four, not mistaken. Four F2100s. Yeah. And people, it was it was part of, it was an experience, which is why right. I love it. So we're, we're, again, we're not saying this is going to replace DTG printing. No, we are not saying that. But what we're saying is it opens up different doors, more doors, things that you probably wouldn't have tried before. And in some cases, it simplifies the process. So it eliminates some of the variables and allows you to do things before allows you to do new things that before you weren't able to do. So exactly. um, so we're pretty much there at the end. Tim, if there's anything that you saw in the chat that you want to talk about or answer a question, Terry, same thing. I'm going to throw it back to you before I wrap up the last slides. And then I share one more special something that neither of you have seen before. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> um, you know, I, a lot of people are asking about the process and um, looking for that guide and things like that. Um, I don't know how we can get those out, get the guide out to some of these people or, or go on the website. And well, certainly if they're our customer and they're already doing business with us, we would be happy to share that with you. Otherwise it, it comes with that sample pack. So I, I didn't really want to turn this into a sales pitch, but you know, for, for under hundred bucks um, you can get some adhesive, some, some transfer sheets and the guide. So um, Jay, I will say uh, there was a last question here from Philip about curing and or drying process. Uh, once you have produced your transfer and you're going to let it sit for a minute, then you're going to sprinkle your, your adhesive on it. At that point, um, you can run it down a conveyor dryer. If you're a screen printer, you're going to speed it way up. You can use a bottom heat element uh, on a uh, on a heat press like a Geonite bottom heat element, or or a lot of the companies make bottom heat element, or uh, a little trick that that our good friend Roy and a lot of uh, folks listening know Roy, he just brings the heat press down, heats up the bottom platen, lifts it up, and just lays that transfer on there. And what it's doing is it's curing the ink and it's melting the the adhesive. You lay it on there for sixty seconds, and that transfer is ready to go onto a garment. So then going onto a garment, you're going to put it on the heat press. You're going to lay the transfer on. You're going to cover it with a silicone coated parchment paper that you already have because you're a DTG printer. Press it for 15 seconds. You're going to take it, you're going to let it cool, peel it. Here's the, here's the secret though. Hit it for five more seconds without the paper on there. I mean, you're going to put the transfer or I'm sorry, the silicone coated parchment paper on, but, right. but it's just the ink and adhesive on the garment, hit it for five more seconds. That's going to really increase your washability. So uh, quickly and hopefully uh, clearly that's uh, that's basically how you do it. Love it. Great, great, great job, Terry. Sounds like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice, I want to share quickly for everyone that's tuned in, whether you're a customer of ours or a future customer of ours, we hope that we can earn your trust. If you need help and you're stuck, we are literally a click away. Yes, we recognize that you purchased your printer from some other dealer, but it has come to our attention that not all dealers are adequate at providing the same level of thorough training that we are. We do have the largest training support team, uh, second to Epson. Epson, obviously, um, is going to be number one. But if you need help, please reach out to us. Go to our website. There is a technical support uh, look for technical support in the in the drop down menu. Click on that and fill out a tech ticket. And uh, we, we tend to get to those in the same day. Sometimes if we get overloaded, um, it might take 24 hours before we can get back to you. But um, don't be mad at us for trying to help you. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> get in the queue and uh, we'll do our best to take care of you. So that's free support to you. Um, we can at least be confirming of what you think or what you saw. Um, if you got an error code, and you're not sure what to do. Those are some of the reasons that you might check in with us. Also, because it comes up so often, yes, we can do paid training. So Equipment Zone realizes that many people, or if they've hired a second employee or they have a second shift, they want to get some training from us, even though they bought from a different dealer, that is available. Again, go to our website, click on training, and you can see the Equipment Zone training process. It's worth it. We probably do several a week, um, so check it out. And then if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, what? What? So please 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is where this recorded session will be. You can watch it again and where you can watch the previous sessions where we talked in depth about six months ago for both printers, the F2, well, the F2100, um, which would apply to you 2000 folks. So the, the specific instructions step-by-step -step, all the way through an hour long uh, training video for both the F2100 and the F3070 are available right now on that YouTube channel. So we would love for you to check that out. So those are the things that I wanted to share before I get to share this. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for this? I got to the office early and I just knew this was going to work. And um, I was pretty excited about it. <gasps> Very nice. Right on. Right? <laughs> so check it out. You've got a new opportunity. This was a lot easier than what I tried to do a direct garment print. Now, it's not going to be something you can do the whole shoe. That's why DTG will still be awesome. But this was pretty easy to do. So again, looking for that flexibility, looking for those new opportunities. Um, that's what we wanted the session to be. And I think we provided more than five reasons, guys. I think we I think we did well today. Thank you for the positive feedback. We hope you enjoyed this session. Um, if there's anything else that you guys need to say now is the time. Otherwise, I have one more final slide, which is this one. Terry, take us home. What should we do now? All right. Well, if you have any questions at all, go to equipmentzone.com. Uh, there's our toll-free number, 800 408 zero zero four zero uh my email amy tim reach out to us we're happy to answer any questions you might have and thanks so much for tuning in today awesome thanks guys take care thanks guys bye